In this video, we're going to cover Game Boy Advance simulation on the Mac version of RetroArch. I don't care what anybody says, the Game Boy Advance remains to this day one of the greatest handheld systems of all time with a fantastic library of games and such a great form factor in that original design that was unfortunately held back by the lack of a backlight. But the SP brought that, and I don't know. I don't care for the SP form factor, but I digress. Emulation for Game Boy Advance has been awesome for a good number of years now and allows you to play the awesome library on any number of devices, and today we're going to look at it for M1 and M2 base Max using RetroArch. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, as we begin this video, it is a continuation of my how to install RetroArch setup guide for M1 and M2 based Macs. So if you don't have RetroArch installed, link in the description below will take you to this playlist where you can follow along with the RetroArch setup guide, and then you can continue along with this guide, but you gotta get it installed before you can use it. So there we go. Next, you're gonna need to source Game Boy Advance games, and there are a number of different file types they can be in. They could be in a .zip compress format or an extracted .gba format. I have mine zipped up currently. But if you have a large physical collection of Game Boy Advance games, I have a couple of videos showing you how to back up those games for them using actual Game Boy Advance, GameCube to GBA link cables on a GameCube and Wii, as well as a Nintendo DS with a flash cart. And then there's also the Retro Blaster programmer method. This is definitely the easier of the two. Otherwise, you could source your games by using Google. As always, download links will not be provided on this channel. But once you have your Game Boy Advance games sourced, just store them wherever the heck you want to on your Mac. Again, I put in an external drive in and just named it emulation for ease of access and use and doesn't take up space on my Mac. Now, one last optional item we need is a Game Boy Advance BIOS file. These are no longer required to run Game Boy Advance emulation, but they can help with compatibility as well as giving you the authentic Game Boy Advance boot up animation. So a Game Boy Advance BIOS needs to be named GBA underscore BIOS dot bin. And for anyone interested, that same how to back up your Game Boy Advance games video right here shows you a number of options for backing up Game Boy Advance BIOS files as well. So as always, links in the description below. Otherwise, you could source them using Google, but Again, no illegal download links will be provided on this channel, so please do not ask. But once you have your Game Boy Advance BIOS sourced and renamed to GBA underscore BIOS dot bin, we just need to add it to our RetroArch system folder. So I'm just going to give this one a copy here. Click on Documents inside the Finder, inside your favorites right here. Open up your RetroArch folder, System folder, and then paste the... GBA BIOS right on in, and it is now good to go. And from here, let's go ahead and get our GBA core downloaded. So open up RetroArch. Now from here, go down to the online updater, core downloader, press the right arrow on your keyboard or right on the D-pad of a controller to scroll down to Nintendo. And we are going to be downloading the MGBA core here for Game Boy Advance. And there we go. Now that the core is downloaded, we're ready to begin loading up Game Boy Advance content. So there's two options of doing so. The first being the load content menu. Go down to the slash and navigate to where your GBA games are stored. So I have mine in that emulation drive. And there we go. And then you can just select a game. And it'll boot right up. And if you have that Game Boy Advance BIOS on, you'll see it pop up right there. Now, I don't personally like using that method because it's a little bit long-winded, so what I like to do instead is head down to Import Content here, and for Game Boy Advance games, do a scan directory. So now just navigate to where they're stored once again, and tell it to scan this directory. And after the scan is completed, all of your Game Boy Advance games should be appearing right here. And as long as the scan was able to detect them, it should automatically download box arts for each of your games. But to play a game from the playlist, just go ahead and select it and tell it to run. And then you can select your core and then hit run again. And there you go. Game Boy Advance games up and running on the Mac version of RetroArch. And here we are playing GBA games on the M2 Mac Mini. And with that, you're able to get your Game Boy Advance games up and running. So let's go ahead and discuss more advanced core options available to us with MGBA. So pressing F1 on a keyboard or the guide button on a controller will bring you into the RetroArch quick menu. 
And from here, you can scroll down to core options. So our first set of options are in the system tab. And the first option is Game Boy Model. This is set to auto detect by default, and that should work for most use cases. We're only using MGBA for Game Boy Advance games to begin with, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But if you have a GBA game that's being misidentified, you can manually select the model here. Next up, use BIOS file if found. So if you placed a BIOS file in your system folder, it will use it by default. If you want to turn that off, you can, and it will use the internal high level emulation BIOS. But again, that can reduce compatibility, so it's not really worth turning this option off. Now, if you hate that boot up animation showing up every time you start up a GBA game, well, for one thing, you're a heathen, but if you wanna turn it off, you could just turn this option on right here. Next up, video tab. So default Game Boy palette, we're not gonna really worry about that because we're not using this for normal Game Boy games. So we're just gonna go ahead and skip down to the color correction option here. And this will let you change the colors to more accurately mimic what the GBA LCD was displaying. Now this does re result in a more muted color palette. So probably not gonna be preferable to a lot of you out there, but for those that desire authenticity, the color correction option is available and it is pretty nice. Do note that you can actually get many of the color correction effects on Game Boy specific shaders. So be sure to turn this option off if you plan on using shaders. Next up, inner frame blending. This will simulate the ghosting provided by GBA LCD screens, and this is needed for a number of games to properly showcase effects. So there's a couple different options available, simple, smart, and then there is accurate ghosting, which is definitely preferable if you want to get the most authentic experience possible. Now, again, a lot of shaders will also mimic LCD ghosting, so do be aware of that as you dive in, otherwise you will end up with double ghosting. Next up, audio. You can enable a low pass filter to reduce the grading audio that is presented by the GBA sound chip. So personal preference on if you wanna have that on or not, and then you could choose the filtering level in percentages. Next up, input and auxiliary devices. First up, allow opposing directional input. Not really gonna need that one a whole lot. Solar sensor level. So if you're gonna be playing the Boktai games, you can manually set your solar sensor detection level here to get through the game. And our last option is Game Boy Player Rumble. So with the Game Boy Player on GameCube, a lot of GBA games actually featured rumble support. So you can enable that to emulate that effect. Do note it can break some games, so it is recommended to leave it off for most use cases. Next up, performance. Idle loop removal, remove known. This is just saving on processing power. If you want 100% authenticity, you could turn it to don't remove, but it's really not necessary. We're gonna skip over frame skip stuff because the Macs are good enough to not need it and frame skip is dirty. So yeah, get rid of it. And with that, we have covered our core options available within the MGBA core of RetroArch. So as always, if there's settings you wanna save for some games, but not others, such as the LCD screen blurring or color palettes, come up to manage core options and save them as a game options file. So that way they only apply to that one specific game and not the core as a whole. Now, one last thing we're gonna cover here real quick is the use of shaders. So you can enable video shaders in this menu and then begin to load them up as long as you have downloaded them from the core updater previously as outlined in the initial setup video. But head into the shader slank tab here and you're able to load up a good number of awesome like handheld border effects. So some of the cool ones you can actually come in here and we have a Game Boy Advance with color settings and motion blur settings right here. And that gives us a nice little GBA handheld screen with color correction and motion blur enabled. Now, unfortunately, they are not scaled up on this one, so they are gonna be kind of small. So other options include the GBA LCD Grid V2, as well as just straight up LCD borders without the actual Game Boy background. So here we go. Let's just load up a Game Boy Color with motion blur without the giant GBA border background. So, is an example of that one in effect. I'm not a big fan of that one, to be honest, but just showing off some examples here. So 
So here we go. Here's one of my preferred options. Gives us the Game Boy Advance grid lines, motion blur, and color correction. And looks fairly authentic overall. And especially great if you are further away from your screen. Now, as always, there's no such thing as the perfect shader, so just go through, find ones that you enjoy, and once you've found them, head back into the shader tab and click on this save button, and you can save them as a core preset or a game preset. So I like to do core, so that way every time I load up a GBA game, that's the shader that's gonna greet me. And that's gonna do it as far as Game Boy Advance emulation on the M1 and M2 Max is concerned. Very easy to get this one set up. You can put in an optional BIOS file for better compatibility and authenticity. But otherwise, it's just grab your games and play. But thank you so much as always for watching today's tutorial. I hope it helps you get your GBA emulation projects up and running on your Max to your desires. But here at the end, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current champions, you're amazing, thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going, we couldn't do it without you. But until next time my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.